morning. Good morning. Good morning. to pray with you this morning as we continue our prayers on page 7 of your leaflet. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Almighty God, you are our servant. All the are known. to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As we see that the readings from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen, enabled by the Holy Spirit, stared into heaven and saw God's majesty and Jesus standing at God's right side and, a, and he exclaimed, Look, I can see heaven on display and the human one standing at God's right side. At this they shriek and cover their ears. Together they charged at him threw him out of the city and began to stone him. The witnesses placed their coats in the care of a young man named Saul. As they battered him with stone, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, accept my life. Falling to his knees, he shouted, Lord, don't hold this sin, sin against them. Then he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, come to him, a living stone. Though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight, and like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in the scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They, do, they stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of the darkness and into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the God, the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, 
to show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and, in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The word of the Lord. I want to thank Father Mackenzie for inviting me to be with you all here in lovely Laguna Beach, uh, among all of you in the St. Mary's uh, Church family. Um, in the name of God, the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. I am a deacon in the Episcopal Diocese of Los Angeles. I'm based at All Saints Episcopal Church in Beverly Hills. And uh, somehow this homily is going to end up being about the diaconate uh, of all believers. Jesus throughout the Gospel of John has been talking about being in the Father and the Father being in him, and that I and the Father are one. Jesus has been saying repeatedly from the very beginning of the gospel, and inviting the disciples into a share of God's power that he shares with God, his Father. Near the end of Shakespeare's Hamlet, sensing that the end may be near for him. Hamlet says to his friend Horatio, there's a divinity that shapes our ends, rough hew them how we will. There is a special providence in the fall of a sparrow. If it be now, it is not to come. If it be not to come, it will be now. If it be not now, yet it will come. The readiness is all. If no man knows aught of what he leaves, what is't to leave the times? Let be. Jesus is ready. Now, he must prepare his disciples to be ready for his departure. Less than 24 hours before he is condemned, abandoned by his friends, nailed to a cross and killed, he focuses on the community that is going to be left behind. Jesus, Jesus breaks bread with them one last time. In the same night that he is betrayed, he washes their feet, an act of humility, care, and self-giving love. He tells them, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. 
This reverberates among the disciples and certainly among the community of John for whom he was writing, where they needed to be able to maintain their integrity and their strength in the midst of many external onslaughts. And it reverberates all down the centuries to us as well. In our own world of betrayal, abandonment, and death. Yet Jesus still says, by this all will know that you are my, dis my disciples, if you have love for one another. Then he says he has to leave them. This is the context of this passage this morning. The disciples, though they don't know it yet, will have to face the mystery of the empty tomb. They will have to confront evil. They will have to answer the question, how can we love one another as Jesus command us, com commands us without Jesus being here with us? Same uncertainties that we face. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Jesus says, believe in God. Believe also in me. In Hebrew, uh, the, the word for faith, for believing, is firmness. It's very much like firmness. So to have faith in God is to participate in his firmness. What God has done for Jesus sent him into the world. Jesus now does for his disciples. In my father's house are many dwelling places, he says. These are openings to share in the relationship of Jesus and God, with God. You know the way I am going. This is the true meaning of Jesus' departure, that you have a share in the interrelationship of God, Jesus, and all those who believe. But the disciples don't understand fully what he's saying. The disciples share fully in Jesus' work, which means that they share fully in God's work. For them, to do what Jesus has done then is a way to make visible their intimacy with God and Jesus, which is their participation, is what they did in their participation in the foot washing. That's what it symbolized, it revealing, it revealed the promise of full relationship with God and what this whole moment is about a full relationship with God and with Jesus that Jesus is offering yet again to them and for the last time the transformative power of the foot washing is in the gracious and hospitable service of Jesus his offer of himself in love to love as Jesus loves is to live a life thoroughly shaped by a love that knows no limits, by a love whose expression brings us into a closer relationship with God, with Jesus, with one another, and with God's creation. Imagine the possibilities of community to love in this way. Addressing his disciples, it feels like Jesus is speaking directly to us, an Easter people who live in the reality of a risen Jesus, full of grace and truth. You know the way. We know the way. As Christians, we share this radical belief that God came into the world in the life and death of Jesus. John writes of this in his prologue about the incarnation. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, 
full of grace and truth. God is tangibly available to us and to the world in the person of Jesus. Jesus is ushering into the world a new way of love. I am the way, the truth, and the life. The light of the world, the bread of life. I am the door. I am the shepherd. I am the resurrection and life. I am the one who comes from heaven, the presence of God, to show what God is like, what God does. I'm the avenue of healing and liberation and transforming the ordinary into the extraordinary. But if you do not believe me, believe the works. That made a deep impression on me when I first saw it, because I wasn't quite sure how I felt about this Jesus. I wasn't quite sure if I could get too close to that. There were too many other connotations about Jesus that I, I, I just didn't care for. But the works, I could relate to that. I could be inspired, and I was inspired by the works, the mission of Jesus. What was he doing? The healing, putting humans, men and women, ahead of social norms, being compassionate. It's the works that Jesus wants us to engage in. He exhorts us to embody our faith in service, works of mercy and justice, works of reconciliation. Later that night with his friends, Jesus prays to his father, I glorified you on earth by completing the work you have given me to do so that people may come to see that in the work that I am the, in the father, the creator, and the creator is in me, the redeemer. Jesus gives us a mission here to perform the works of reconciliation that Jesus performs, healing the disorders of existence, redressing imbalances and inequalities, bridging over alienation. Jesus assures us that we who are grounded in a mature faith will have the power to bring a share of Jesus' life to others. Can you imagine that? Have you experienced that? Love is an action. We all know that. God's creative works our works of love and self-giving. As God's created beings, we demonstrate creativity. As part of the Jesus movement, practicing the presence of God in prayer, we are in the way of being co-creators with God. As a deacon of the church, and we heard about uh, ostensibly uh, the one who was the first deacon, Stephen, in the passage read by Cora, my work is to bring to the doorstep of the church the cares, concerns, and hopes of the world. Diakonia is a Greek word which means caring for those in need, carrying out God's vision in the word, in inward action, and in attending to all of God's creation with God's transforming love. Diakonia is central to fulfilling the church's mission as servant leaders. It's an option. We read this morning, Diakonia is an essential part of discipleship, reaching out to all persons created in God's image and to all of God's creation. While it begins in unconditional service to neighbors in need, it leads inevitably through advocacy and prophetic proclamation to bear witness 
in words and deeds to God's presence in the midst of our lives. All followers of Jesus are called through our baptismal covenant to live out diakonia through what we do and the way we live in our daily life in the world, no matter what our occupations are, striving for justice and peace and respecting the dignity of every human being. Recalling Jesus' last discourse with his disciples, servant ministry is where Christ calls all of us. And here's the good news. As Frederick Buchner says, the place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger reside. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able, dear friend, as we turn to page 11 and offer a prayer of a summary of our faith, the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal God of the Father. In this Easter tide, we celebrate and proclaim the signs of Jesus, that all might believe that he is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing they have in his name, saying, Risen Christ, raise us to new life. That amid all the doubts which threaten to destroy the community of faith, Christ's peace may be shared and experienced for the strengthening of belief. Risen Christ, raise us to new life that all who have come to new birth in holy baptism and all who have received the forgiveness of sins and absolution may live in peace with each other. The risen Christ, raise us to new life. That the sick, the infirm, and the disturbed might experience the healing power of the Spirit <clears throat> of the risen Christ. The risen Christ, raise us to new life that those who participate in this Eucharistic meal may taste and see the feast to come in the presence of the one who died and is alive forevermore. Yes, Risen Christ, Christ raise us. Yes, Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, especially those for whom we now pray. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, and for John, our bishop, 
In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of Wales. Risen Christ, raise us. Lord, we believe. Help our unbelief and hear us for the sake of the one who died for our sins and rose again for our justification. Even Jesus Christ, the first and last, the living one, in whose name we pray. Amen. Dear friends, the peace of the risen Lord be always with you. And also with you. Boldly greet each other in peace. Boldness in the line dancing on May 21st. It's going to be a fun de- uh, luncheon. We're going to have pizza salads and uh, wonderful line dancing. I've got some names already. Um, if you'd like to sign up, see me in the Guild Hall and uh, there'll be a few surprises at the event. Now, if you don't want to line dance, that's fine, but I tell you what, it's fun watching people with two left feet. So anyway, I wanted to thank you for your support and we look forward to seeing you on May 21st after church. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Nicole, for being here.
thank you, Dick and Daniel, for being here, driving all that way, three hours from All Saints in Los Angeles, fighting the traffic. I appreciate yeah. your presence here. Two hours. Two hours. <laughs> the coffee hour, you will get to meet. Yes, yes, yes. The coffee hour, you will get to meet Dick and Daniel. And if you have any questions about the diaconate, uh, or what he does, or his ministry, that will be the place uh, that you can explore that with him, and it's a gift you have him here. If you are visiting us, like uh, Tom, uh, I invite you to take the bulletin with you. I just made it so I get to pick up these bullets. I, 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 like Tom, I invite you to take the bulletin with you. Send me an email, because I really want to know what you're listening to, what song's moving you this week, and where are you finding hope in your life. And because she wasn't here last week, I want to lift up uh, Heidi Schiff because you get to send her an email when you ask, where is the rector? Because your rector is discovering God. And I give thanks to Heidi and Doug, may he rest in peace. And what does that mean? It's because, wow, who knew God was so much fun? <laughs> so I have like seven apps on my iPhone and I'm watching YouTube videos between myself and Oliver and Cora who watch Roblox videos. I've got all of my golf, how to get the white swing, how to dig, how to chip, where to chip, how to find the right angle. So it's very, very exciting. So if you're looking for me, I'm usually going to be then at the range, or don't be surprised seeing me in the front garden with a nine eye. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying, it's exciting. Birthdays, anniversaries, Thanksgiving. This morning, at, this morning at eight o'clock was uh, Lisa and John, and they celebrated thirty-two years. Uh, Lisa and John, and at ten thirty we have Ed and Kathy. Thank you. Forty-three years, wow. and we have. Yes, yes, yes. Jim and Barbara Pankaz Vick took T4. Yes, so it's all about love connection today. Let us pray. Okay. Holy God, I give you thanks to call me and your faithful disciples by name to be your beloved. I give you thanks for their journeys, for their love connections, for their relationships, for their years. Together. Continue to strengthen them. Hold them as the apple of your eye and hide them under the shadow of your wings as you envelop them for their future seasons of love together with your nurturing touch, your blessing, your strength. All this we lift up in the name of Jesus because I know you love it when we pray. Amen. 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 There are no other Thanksgivings. I'm, I'm really grateful to share this most divine supper with you. It is a gift to pray with you, and it is a gift to journey with you. And I'm going to offer a podcast episode this afternoon. You will hear it this afternoon, but it's going to be about friendships. And 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 the one thing I want to invite you to, friends, is that I've read uh, they suggest that friendships uh, involves uh, consistency and how wonderful. And on every Sunday, we gather here at 8 and 10.30. So if you're looking for a space to nurture some new friendships, some old friendships, some friendships in any way or form, we gather here and know that this is a place you can do that. And it's a gift to do that with you. And my other Thanksgiving is that I've read in the newspaper, in Orange County, we might have a 5,000-person seat cricket stadium soon. So I give thanks to that. Wherever you find yourself, if you journey of faith, you are most welcome to share this most divine supper. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and our labor for the Lord.
things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Continue on page 13 of the Olympic Defense. <clears throat> now the Lord be he with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. How chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true pastor lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who will forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. She might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God, living among us. Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love, and the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. The night before he died for us, Jesus was at the table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you and gave it to them and said, Drink the soul of you this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of God. Christ has died, and Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Now gathered at the table of God of all creation, remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine, and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your Spirit over the whole earth, and make us your new creation. The body of Christ given for the world you have made in the fullness of time. Bring us with St. Mary, our patron, 
Stephen and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and in Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Now, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, in the language of your heart, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Christ the Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be the feast. Hallelujah.
invite you to stand as you are able, dear friends, especially as we give thanks for this meal and the altar flowers this Sunday given to the glory of God from Ed and Kathy Hankey in celebration of their 43rd wedding anniversary. We now offer together in thanksgiving the post communion prayer on page 15 of the leaf. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously us. Also, be members of the sons of the Savior Jesus Christ. We manifest the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world of peace and grant the spirit to nourish the love to serve you with the guidance and singleness of our heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, may the living God remove the suffocating shroud that lies upon our world. May the risen Savior draw the sting of death, bringing all to life in him. May the flowing spirit set us in all creation free and seal our hearts with faith. And the blessing of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love this day and always. Amen. And now we sing, dear friend.
Was that a light sword? 